So we have been dealing yesterday with the with the difficult minds, mostly. We saw that uh, our soul is made up of our intellect, our emotions, and the will. When the enemy uses the five common senses to grab you and me, he impairs our intellect. We become sick, but we are not aware that we are sick. Yesterday we said that we eat a drunk, and it's even staggering. If you say, I am not drunk, and the man is drunk. When you meet a crazy person, a mad person, they will never accept that they are mad. We said you could be running away from them because they are naked, completely naked and doesn't care. Then you'll be running away from you thinking that you're not mad. Human beings, our minds have been impaired. So we are thinking, sometimes I say it's like life has, has become upside down. In fact, when you're striving to live a good life, people think they're very stupid. If you strive to live a holy life, they will abuse you. They will call you, they will tell you, you have pretended to be a religious sister. That's the thing they call us. Yeah, are you a pastor? Are you a priest? When they call you that, they, want, they have seen something good. Yes. You know, when somebody has seen, He's not happy until you commit the same sin. They are never told. It's like you're burning them. They are never told. You know, if you're friends and I've committed a crime and you're not committed, I feel as if you're burning me. Until you do it, then I'm happy. We are equal. We are both man. And we start thinking that way. In the present world, the wrongs are always becoming the rights. The rights are becoming the wrongs. And we are justified. We are living in a world of justification. We are very good at it. But I believe those who are here today, to a large extent, to realize how the world has become sick. Very, very sick. Our intellect is impaired. Our emotions are crushed. And when you're wounded, you cannot give anything else. You can only give what you have. That's why we are wounding each other and then fighting center. Today we want to deal with the emotion of the, the inner person because we are very wounded. Yesterday it was a healing of the mind. Today we want to go deeper. When the mind is wounded, the intellect, through the many things that we said yesterday, we start thinking abnormally, though we think we are normal. We end up causing pain to others, and the world is full of pain. Left, right, and center. And today we want to see that. And not only see, but we want to humbly ask and plead with the Lord to heal the pain and the shame. Some of us, whatever happened, you've never forgiven yourself. You have condemned yourself. You've written yourself of yet God has not written you off. Some of us, even if you go for the sacrament of penance and reconciliation, and the priest in the person of Christ has told you your sins are forgiven. You still believe your sin is so horrible you cannot be forgiven. Let me tell you, that voice you are hearing is the voice of the devil. If you ever hear a voice telling you that you as what I did cannot be forgiven, it is not the Holy Spirit. You will allow the enemy to see it again. He's the one in charge of your life. Once God has forgiven, that fire in heaven is burned. So if God has forgiven you, who are you not to forgive yourself? What is this that you did that you think is so huge? He died for everything. There is no sin that God does not forgive. None. Even if you brought not HIV to your family, you did it. That is there. You cannot undo, but God can heal. But you cannot undo that which happened. It is history. It is there. But your future, you can achieve. So it doesn't matter what you've gone through. Today, we want to ask that special question for us. And he says, Ask. From yesterday, I told you the most important thing is to cooperate with the grace of God. Cooperate. Cooperate. That's the only thing we need to do. God wants to heal all of us. The question is, we want to be healed. And wanting to be healed is not an aspect of just saving the mouth. It's an aspect of making radical decisions.
decided not to allow the enemy to own you. We say baptism in the Holy Spirit means not just the water that touches only the body, but allowing the Spirit of God into your body, into your soul, and sitting with your spirit. It is the Spirit of God within you that renews your soul and your body, and you're able to have the fruit of self control. You can tell your body that, no. You can tell your friends that, no, not for me. Even if there are a million against you, when you have the grace of God, you'll stand like Daniel. Even if it means going to death, life is dead. You'll stand like Susanna. Even if it means being stoned to death for God, you'll stand like Shredder, Meshach, and Bendego, telling the king, no, for sure, we will never bow to any other God. In the present world, we are bowing left right and center to evil because the willpower has been crushed. And today we want to heal. We want to get back. The Holy Spirit is to help us to have dominion together with God. You know, when God created the physical world, the physical animals, the physical trees and the fruits, the physical everything, He said finally, let us create man and woman of course in our own image in the image of god god is eternal and created as eternal being that's why you will never die we will only bury the body of sin but not sin we will only bury your body but not sin because you will never die you are an eternal being in the image of god that's why he built of the human beings why was he breathing unto us to receive his spirit to sit in our spirit so that as he has dominion over the heavens on this physical world, he will continue having dominion through human beings. What a privilege, what a favor. But we love the Holy Spirit to see. Sin kills your soul. Sin kills your intellect. Sin kills, breaks your emotion. Sin kills your will. Yesterday we read quite a lot of verses. If you want to regain yourself, you must strive. Strive not to sin. Sin is killing us. It's impairing us. It's making us mad. And we think we are not. That's why people are ready to argue with God. LGBTQ. We were born homosexuals. I was born gay. I want to change my sex. You know more than the Creator. It's absurd. It's sad that people can actually try to with God. You know, the other day I listened to a lady, she said, Oh, she was talking about uh, the young people having sex. And she was saying that she was actually mocking God. She was on television advising young people and saying, If God did not want young people to have sex at the early stage, why did He control their hormones? Throwing the ball back to God, He should have given them, but because they are feeling they want the pleasure, God should have done it, so it's okay. Can you imagine? Yet we are the ones who are creating that environment, advertising Homo with a naked woman. <laughs> Madness. Yesterday I was asking, what does Homo go to do with a naked woman? Watching programs that are just spoiling our children. Young as they are. I'm praying for these bodies who are here. May God give you soberness in your mind to know the difference between good and bad things. You know, if the devil is here and God is here, who do you want to make happy? Who wants to be with God? God. If you steal sugar from the mother or the mom, your mom's money, who is happy? God or the devil? The devil. Do not make him happy. If you watch bad things, who is happy? If you make noise in class, who is happy? Hey, before you do anything, ask yourself, if God is here, the devil is here, if I do this, who's going to be happy? You will change your ways. Even if the boy is telling let's do this for the girls, ask yourself, if I do this, who's going to be happy? And it will help in your life. That's all I'm trying to explain in my second book. Whom do you please? To show people that everything you do 
when you go to your bedroom and you are watching that, that is who you say that I'm alone, nobody is. God is there, the devil is spirit, and we are pleasing him. So it doesn't matter, whatever you do, whether alone, we really need to think twice. So when you go to the healing of emotions, yesterday we read uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 25, where the Lord says, Before you are conceived in your mother's womb, I knew you. God knew you, you existed. Even if it is in the mind of God, we existed. We are not afterthought. We are not a Bible. We are not a mistake. We are not unwanted. You know the way people now call babies unwanted pregnancy. Unwanted. Unwanted. And when you enjoy that, you didn't say unwanted. Even if it's out of rape, you said yesterday. The rape, the act is bad. It is painful. But that child is a child. So we existed. But in our mother's womb is where we are given the physical body. Where God started putting the nose in the right place. The eye in the socket. Where God started putting you together. He is the one who fashioned you. Psalms 139, from verse 1 and following. The Lord says, if you go to the heavens, I'm there. You go to the underworld, I'm there. Wherever you go, God says, I'm there. Verse 13, 14, he says, I knitted you in your mother's womb. God was in your mother's womb making you who you are today. Making the beauty for you. Today you forget that beauty is from God. You feel it is you. You should read Ezekiel chapter 16, if I'm not wrong later, and see how God describes how much he loves you. Ezekiel 16. If someone can check it for me and confirm that it's correct, but from verse 4 there about. Where God says how you get the day, the day now. He says, when you are born, even nobody cut your own little heart. You know, you are just full of blood. Nobody knew how to take it. He describes it from, from birth. He describes that love. He says when you are crying, nobody knew your needs. Your mother only knows your physical needs. She doesn't know your emotional and spiritual needs. When a baby cries, you always say, hey, maybe it's wet, maybe it's hungry, that's what we know. But God knows beyond that, the spiritual needs of that child, God took care of it. He says how he took the baby and washed you, washed you to remove the blood. He explains that blood, how he, he, you were naked and he dressed you. He explained how he put the earrings on you, how he put, and you know, everything it's, I mean, he described. Then he says, when you grew, and your breast coming out, and you're beautiful, you started seeing like you own the world. You started using a beautiful prostitution. That's how God started. When he started deserting God, because he have started, our eyes are open. Is it the one who is there? Is the one that you can read it later by yourself. The, the way God is trying to take care of you, and then how when you grow, when he comes in 12, 16, how we deserve him and we start now getting paid into our soul. So he was there in my mother's room, he was there in your mother's room, knitting you, making you. Even he said, Darkness is not darkness in that Psalm 139. Darkness, you know, the eye of God, the Bible says, the eye of the Lord is 10,000 times brighter than the sun. 10,000 times brighter than the sun. <laughs> So darkness is not darkness. You are going to enter your guest room and you shut the light and then you say, nobody saw us. God is here watching. There's nowhere to hide from God. That's what he's telling us. So this God who knows us so well, this God who was there from your conception today, is the God I want to invite back into our life. We need to conceive him again as a blessed but to be reconciled him. When you conceive God, if you allow God in your spirit, Today, I can assure you it's going to be. But if you deny your entry, it doesn't force. So you have work to do. You have work to do. I have work to do. The work of opening my heart. The work of allowing God back. The work of allowing the true love. Not what is called love in the world today. To a large extent, I say it is last. It is not love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not hurt. 
This setup will allow you that this has to be every day. That is not allowed. The interest of the money. The interest of the money. When the money gets finished, the interest of the beauty freeze. When beauty goes, conditional love. The love of God is different. So today, very quickly, I want us to go into stages of our lives where the soul is wounded. The records are kept in the soul. Our intellect keeps the records in the soul. Our emotions, we are broken. So our decision making is based on that history, the painful part which is stored in our soul, in our intellect, stored there, in our subconscious, it is there. Our decisions are based on that and the brokenness. I will never get married. Wouldn't. Wouldn't. When you get in, you'll get married because you already have a spirit of rejection. You're rejecting men or they're rejecting you. You invite the spirit. And when the intellect is healed and the emotions are healed, naturally, the path, the grace of God, the power and authority of heaven to say not to sin, it comes back naturally. There are people here, by the grace of God from this time on, you'll be surprised. Your friends will be surprised when they're saying no to some things that appear to obvious people. You're like, what happened? I told you yesterday, most of my friends will be today, and I'm not saying I'm complete, I'm not perfect. Not even the biggest perfect. We all striving, striving to please God. But for sure, I know one thing. When you're striving to please God, you know. When you're not striving, you know. When you try to not commit sin, you know. You cannot cheat yourself and you cannot cheat God. And when you are flowing with the world, you know. When you say, God, I know this is bad, but everybody is doing it. Remind your neighbor you love them. You can decide in this present world to be a Susanna. You can decide in this darkened world to be a Daniel. You can decide to be in this darkened world to be a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, a Moses, when everybody's complaining at the Red Sea that, God, why did you bring us here? We are going to die. They are waiting some good meat and food. But here there's nothing. When the Red Sea is dead, behind Pharaoh, the army is dead. But Moses looks up and he tells them, This Egypt is the thing here today. You will never see them again. That's what you need to speak to your problems. Not magnifying your problems. Your God cannot be so big and your problems are big. A contradiction. If your God is big, your problems are big. God is able to scatter all our challenges right now with one one. One. He created the whole world with the world. He resurrected Lazarus, dead and still for days. My problem and your problem. And nothing to God. Nothing. If only we can allow him in. He wants to sit in this place. Your body, my body, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He's the one to heal you. But there are things you need to let go. In the computer world, they say garbage in, garbage out. There's some garbage you need to cook today. And it is you to allow God to remove. When you enter the temple and you sit in the mountains and the merchandise, you need to allow him into the temple to root out all evil from us so that he can sit in there. The world is wounded and we are wounding each other. Today, we are going to eat something. <laughs> there is a beautiful food here. I want you to imagine that this is your heart. You know, we always, human beings always believe that the soul is sitting in the heart. For me, I don't know where the soul is, for me, God knows. But we always tend to believe that the heart carries everything, it carries life. You stop beating in your body. So, assume this is your heart, or assume this is your soul. 
the inner person. And this is the person we want to deal with today. God, in his creation, we were perfect with his no wounds. But along the way, we've acquired some wounds. And there are many stages in life where you can acquire these wounds. And the first stage where we acquire the wounds, not all of us, but some of us, we may not know because you are one second old. At the point of conception and in, in your nine months in the womb, people acquire wounds. Remember your soul is complete. What is growing is the body. The body is what is growing every other day. But your soul, that moment of conception, you are a being. So your soul is complete. So the memory you keep in was still there. You are subconscious, which you did not know as a child, but your soul moves. And it has kept the records. Many a times in the present world, sexual sin has become normal. So many people are fooling around, and many a times conception is happening when people are like, I'm not ready. That's why you hear we even call it God's children unwanted. How do you declare children unwanted and you're not created? Unwanted means you're going back to your mother's room. Go back the number of years that you're born. Go back to your mother's room and then your mother says, unwanted. How would you feel? You know, sometimes when I see adults crying, when we lose our loved ones, we cry. How about those who cannot fight for themselves? Do you know how many emotions are happening right now? In one day, it's millions and millions of innocent. <laughs> and some of them are in the womb. We try to remove them and not sustain them. Maybe you're here. So your spirit knows. Your spirit knows. They try to do you. And they are moving and living in that spirit of death. That's why sometimes the spirit you feel like committing suicide. Nowadays, unbelievable, even young children. Young children. But people are getting to that. People are getting to Why? They are wounded. Even their thinking is wounded. Someone is thinking about taking their own life. It's a sick person. Very, very sick. They are crushed. Their thinking is not normal. Their emotion is broken. Their willpower to say yes to life is not there. That they want to take away their own life. Why? There's a wound in the soul. And today we want to invite the Lord to heal those wounds. The nine months in your mother's womb at the time of conception, many a times when our father is drunk, is a drunkard, or the mother, the baby is getting drunk with the mother inside. When the father comes home making a lot of noise, beating the wife, as the mother coils, the baby in the womb coils, and the soul. Is that there is a spear inside the soul of that young father. From the womb, the most comfortable place, the, the most, I don't even know how to describe the womb. God created it to be such a comfortable environment. By even that, He have allowed the devil in there to inflict pain, not just the mother. To the baby. When the father tells the wife or the boyfriend tells the girlfriend, mm -mm, I don't know you. No, no, it's not my pregnancy. That soul in there knows that it's rejected. Some of us are walking with the spirit of rejection.
rejection until today. Wherever you go, you are rejected. Whatever you do, you feel you are rejected. You feel people don't love you wherever you go. Maybe you are carrying a spirit of rejection that would have come along the way or possibly at conception or maybe those nine months. Their children will grow hating their dad or their mom. And you're giving them the best love. And you don't know why. Go back in time. How are you behaving when it was there? Maybe the hatred started from here. When you try to abort that child, you even saw some the rat noise or whatever, to flash it. The soul of you, they are trying to destroy me. And so it goes in that. You are an enemy. You want them to finish me. Even though it doesn't know consciously, but the spirit knows. So that child might go hating you and you're wondering, what have you kind done as a mother? You need to embrace that child and pray in general. Just say, my son, my daughter, if I've ever wronged you, please forgive me. And I also forgive you for anything that I've done to you. It's always good to pray for your children. As a parent of the second God, always tell the children you down, pray for them. And always speak those words. My children, I forgive you for all the Just pray in general. But you know you mean it in your heart. All the bad things you've done, I forgive you. Be good children, yes. And me, if I never wronged you in any way, from the time I was sitting until today, please forgive me. You are bringing healing. You are bringing healing. And you might find that the relationship might be healed. And the son who was resentful, rebellious, might start becoming very friendly to you. Because you've broken that barrier. Sometimes there are barriers. At the time of birth, sometimes children get a lot of pain. We are here today as adults, and maybe at the time we are born, maybe we got some wounds. In the present day, women don't want to give birth naturally. I don't know about Zambia. You want to cut and remove. Cut and remove. When they cut your drugs, by the time the baby is coming to the world, you're still in medication, you're not yourself. Comes into the world from people who are wounded. You can only give what you have. Maybe the nurse is wounded. And your baby cries, the mother is wounded. Yeah, shut up. You think I'm a mother? <laughs> The process could be difficult. The pushing could cause, could delay, and the child is being pressed left, right, and center. It can be from the physical challenges. The baby can be wounded. Oh my God, where is trouble? I'm in India. Here is comfortable. In Kenya, many people, I don't know about Zambia, many men and women, they always like their first one to be boys. So sometimes when you give birth to a girl, it becomes a problem. And maybe there are many boys who want a girl, and the next one is again another boy. You know, in my family, there are many boys that want a girl. You can find what my father is looking for. <laughs> so it is possible maybe one of the child would have received wounds at birth. Because maybe another boy, they wanted a girl. Our sister is the second boy. So from number two. Boy, 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 boy. There's a particular case of this couple. They, 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 they were expecting their first child. And the husband was so excited. He was always touching, you know, the stone of the baby and praying and saying, you know, in our place, in most tribes, they name, 
if it's a son after the father. Like my name after my father. If it's a girl after my mother. The second boy, if it's a second boy after my wife's father. If it's a girl after my wife's mother. That's how we name it. Some, most of the tribes in Kenya. So this guy was always praying, touching the belly and saying, Oh, that is coming. Oh, no, that is coming. And he's always praying. The day of birth. He left the hospital in the north of the wife, angry. This poor thing, after it was born, it needs is rejected. The soul knew where the record had kept. I am rejected, I am unwanted. And the poor thing started crying. It cried for four days, nonstop. And on the fourth day, the doctor said, after they are trying to treat it, it refused to suckle the mother. Don't take the milk, they have to give the poor thing food using. You can imagine. Three boy old baby. And eventually they say, Where is the father to this child? The mother said, He got angry. Why? I produced a girl. Give me his number. He called him. Please, I want to see you. what is the problem. No, 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 I need to see you. After some struggle, he said, okay, I'm coming. He came. The doctor took him to see the, the child. All the spiders. And he said, look at the girl. It has not fed for four days. Struggling, crying. We've done all the checks. All the tests are showing negative. Please, just embrace your daughter. And when the girl looks to the chest of the father, he stopped crying. Mm. Accepted. There are many children today who are suffering because of absent fathers, absent mothers. We are busy looking for money, we've forgotten our children. In fact, money has become more important than our children. Ask your neighbor, what is important? Money to be a child. <laughs> I said more important. <laughs> Both are more important. Oh. One doesn't have to wake up another. <laughs> if it is both, your are very have one. Money is important, but cannot be as important as. It can't. When money becomes that important, it becomes another goal. Money is important, yes, but it cannot be that important. It cannot be. You know, I remember there was a WhatsApp message, there was like a clip of uh, a child who was asking the mother. You know, whenever the mother and the father they live there, they love their bedroom because they're very important things there. But they leave the child in the house girl, in the house boy. So the child is wondering, that room and me. Oh, this boy wants <laughs> You cannot trust the house girl in that room. But you can trust me in the house girl. <coughs> so the other stage where children get a lot of wounds, and some of us are adults today, and we know the wounds, is ages 1 to 5. Young children. Just a week and a half, I said, I went to the Baptist school near St. Ignatius. And I saw toddlers, toddlers, two years. And I asked sister, what are these doing here? They're supposed to be the ones of the family. They're supposed to. Sister told me, no, they are safe by here. And I told me, what is it? What are you talking about? And he told me, a father, just a few days before that, a father raped a two-year-old. Can you imagine children are the same with us? That two-year-old, what do you think is in the soul? Some of us are walking. When you're like this, can you even jump on the ball? No. Oh! Faith. Can you even climb?
work for the Lord. You know, I think here we have a lot of rules because people have not been seeing you for the Lord. You know, you worship it. I'm just saying, I'm praying when my daughter is here, singing alone. In fact, all of us in come and we sit down. Let them continue their day with us. <laughs> it's like entertainment. You guys are making me this dollar. Dollar, ask her. She's from Dollar. Dollar was on fire. I was entering that room. I just feel God is here. And no wonder, no wonder God did wonders to you, our wildest imagination. People were praising God. And God was happy in heaven. And when God is happy, blessings fall down. They come down. But if we cannot make God happy, who else are we going to make happy? If we cannot clap for God, who are you going to clap for? Politicians? So they give you a little money. We are wounded, that's why we don't know who we are worshipping. That's why we cannot jump for him. You feel like jumping for the God is belittling yourself. Asking David, he dances until the clothes are falling and he says, I know to whom I'm dancing for. One to five years. When sister told me that, I felt up because I've seen these things in my country, Kenya. I live with the same demons in Zambia. What do you think our children feel when they see on television what fathers are doing to their children? So the wise voice. You could be here, you know men don't talk. But I want to tell you a man that if that was done to him with his hands, the wife will suffer. The family will suffer. His dying case is revenge by the Lord saying, We can only give what you have. If this is what you have, people will suffer. Remember the trip from Uganda? The husband who was beating that young boy or girl, I think it was a girl, also, throwing it to the wall and then all, then jumping on his back. How wounded is that soul? How wounded is that soul? And let me tell you, even these young ones, they are wounded. They didn't think it. They are beginning. Don't worry about it. The grace of God is here. They might not speak. But when you start praying, you see them cry. My brother's son, once, I was teaching about forgiveness. And, and it was. Catholic men, we call it organization here, we call it Catholic men, it was the men. And the young boy like that, was sitting in the back. I said, go be with the others. No, come and listen. The time of prayer, we are praying here. The boy is crying. Why is he crying? So after the session, I asked the boy, why are you crying? He told me, because I've discovered I am a murderer. <laughs> you think they are not hearing? The word of God is unstoppable. They need the word of God. So don't worry about it. Let him see. It will stick in his mind. When he wants to have others, he remember putting a spear to somebody's hand. He had the meaning for God. Whoever hates another, he said, Why do you think you're a murderer? There's another boy in school. He, he wronged me and I hated him. So I'm a murderer. That's all strange. Did you forgive him? Yes. So he no longer mad. He started smiling. He started, you know, he was happy. And when he went home, believe it or not, that boy was preaching to the mother. He was telling the mother, Do you know, mama, why we are not blessed? Because you are mad at What? What? The mother, what? What are you saying? Mom, we've been mad at Where did you get this from? Uncle Steve was teaching. What did he teach? Then the boy started teaching the mother. She understood she was actually a mother. And she started forgiving from the teaching of that one. They need the word of God. They are in the right place. If we got it from this young age, we would not be crazy people as a world is today. In fact, all you need to give your children to Jesus. I keep saying, I would rather, I would rather my son 
get a D in school with Jesus rather than an A without Jesus. In the present day, we are ready to get A's, they become lawyers, engineers, minus Jesus. That is total disaster. That girl in Uganda packed the wall. Now she's about 14 to be a lot wrong. How do you think her life is? Boys will suffer in her hands, bitterness. Whoever will marry her, she doesn't heal. That house, bitterness. Some of us women are destroying our own families. When the husband comes in late, the person says, Eh? Where are you coming from? What time is this? Men, how they are made, when you do that, I say to you, he'll not talk. But he'll show you more. He'll come two hours later than that. <laughs> that is how men are made. The men who don't have Jesus. So the more you have the litany of abuses, the worse it will become. There's a lady in Kenya, a nurse, who had a young child. Younger than that, she was a single mother, and uh, she used to work most of the time at night. And her neighbors kept telling her, "There's something weird in your house. Every time you go to work, your child cries in ways that are not normal." But she thought it was gossip. She did not listen. So it kept on happening. <coughs> And one day the neighbor says, the neighbor says, enough is enough. Today, you're not going to work. You dress up, put on your uniform nicely, walk out, make sure you walk out with the key. Spare or whatever. And then come to your neighbor's house. She went to the neighbor's house. After exactly half an hour, like after the day, the child started screaming. Screaming, pain. She said, what is going on? She wanted to run to her house. She said, no, no, sit down and listen to the music you've been listening to. She could not believe it. The child is really in pain. And after some time, he said, okay, let's go slowly. They went slowly and opened the door. What she saw, she didn't know that the house girls had employed. House girls are not bad, but we need to be careful. House boys are not bad, but the present age when people are full of these kind of things, they can instill vices in my children that later we ask them what happened. It might be too late. She didn't know she had employed the devil worship. So wherever she left, this girl knew how to inject and drop blood on the child and drink it. So she found, shh, your own son, your own daughter. What do you think the soul of that child is like? That child forever will say, where was my mother? Where was the father figure, the protector, the provider? Busy looking for one child. You know, in the West, they're starting, they're starting to discover this what you are doing now, we are borrowing from them. But they are starting to discover the importance of parenting. They are starting to agree, husband and wife, that when our children are very young, one of us needs to be at home. That foundation is key. We want to be super rich, and we are creating monsters in our society. No wonder the things that are happening. In Kenya, it is normal now for a young man to butcher the mother, the father, and the sickness so they can remain in poverty. Sickness. And of course, he doesn't get the property because he's dead. But before that comes to the mind, already the intellect is impaired. Emotions are not butcher your own mother. And you don't feel it. You don't feel it. Is that person normal? So the world is full of bitterness. We are suffering every day, almost at every stage of life. 
The age of Proverbs from maybe 6 to 18. I'm going to share this story about a pastor in Kenya who got HIV. Then I don't know where he went for his counseling. And he was told that when a man has HIV and he sleeps with a young girl, a young virgin, HIV goes. Is that nonsense also in Zambia? <laughs> And the man decided to look for an opportunity <coughs> to get a young girl. <coughs> and one day he told the wife, so indeed, there's that thing you've been asking me for years, get the money. You go to Lusaka town, you go buy that and you come back. He knew he has about two hours. He remained at home with their daughter of seven years and went home. The daughter is HIV. This is our world. Why do you think people are behaving so well? How do demons get to people through these offenses? Bitterness is one of the ways of getting demonic attacks. Most of the people are wounded. They need healing. Relationships are not okay because of this. A boy who's like this is going to want very many girls. A girl who's like this is going to want very many boys. And the husband and the wife. Can you imagine the life of that girl? Age 14 and following, teenagers. I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you. Pregnancy, I don't know you, the girl. In fact, the girl child really is wounded. The girl child. In every stage, in Kenya story, wounded by the boyfriend, wounded by the lecturer to get good grades, at work to get a promotion, you have been forced into sex. It's horrible what is happening in the world today. And that's why the girls are rebelling and saying, Men, you think you know. So, girls, back at home, they become worse than men. Some have seven boyfriends, some are married. They are changing them like clothes, revenging. So, more wounds. Becoming a spiral effect. This is the world we are living in. Boys, you know, back at home when a girl, in our days, nowadays it's normal for a girl to have 10 boyfriends. Nowadays. In fact, I used to read in the Bible about sex orgies. Now it's a reality in our present age. Reality. Back at home to find children in a country, 20. Boys and girls, all of them in their natural suit, playing it. Not once they've been caught, not twice. It's that bad. I used to read about it in the Bible and I thought, these are extreme things that cannot happen. It's happening. To go to the capital city, you go to a place where people enter their natural suits, then you exchange partners, even adults. It's happening. I don't know about this. To go to some pubs, well-known pubs, and you find young boys and girls from school, they pass by, they are given some sweets, some lollipops, they are lined up, men come choosing, both boys and girls, and after they eat, they get more lollipops, and a little money to buy a few things on the way, and you think your child was left doing homework, Extracurricular activities, the world has become horrible. Mm -hmm. This is our world. And people think it is normal. The intellect is impaired in a very big way.
and to a place like the same, the same. Sexual favors everywhere. Wounds. <coughs> when you marry, people believe, especially women when you marry, say, shh, my soul now rests in joy. After a short time, you realize there are challenges in marriage. People who could not sleep without seeing each other. You must receive that call before you sleep. In our days, you must get that note. You know, you wrote the heart and the spear. I think we do the spear so great. <laughs> You can imagine how you used to love each other. And today, in our marriages, you find the husband sleeps facing the north, the wife facing the south. Hate great. Two murderers in one bed. <laughs> Why? Because if you get into marriage like this, do you expect that marriage to be peaceful? I wish to sincerely thank you for tuning in into this channel, YouTube channel of Steve Wa Yesu. And if you like the teachings on this uh, uh, channel, you may click on the like uh, icon and also on the subscription button and on the notification bell so that every time a new teaching is uploaded on this channel, you get a message on your phone. Thank you so very much. And may God bless you. Bye-bye. Yeah.